Hello internet, what's going on? My name's Jack Finch. I'm new here, but I'm also eager to be asking some of life's biggest questions. Make sure to stay tuned and hit that subscribe button down below, and perhaps you'll be seeing just a little bit more of me. Today we're asking the question, what if the Tanistrophius didn't go extinct? Now, you all know the story. Dinosaurs, lizards and reptiles crawling around for millions of years, then boom, asteroid hits, they're all pretty much dead. But what if we stop and wonder for a moment, how would this green earth look if a 20 foot long reptile from the middle Triassic period was still around today? At six meters long, which is roughly the same size as George Washington's nose on Mount Rushmore, the Tanistrophius was a pretty imposing figure. Its extremely elongated neck also stretched an extra three meters, which is roughly the size of a small car. Now, there are several theories that place the Tanistrophius as an aquatic reptile, while others say that they were purely an on-land creature. But the general consensus is that the Tanistrophius was semi-aquatic, which makes things a little bit more terrifying for our big question. We know that there are sharks in the ocean, and generally, we can avoid them. There are lions in the jungle, and yet, generally, we can avoid them. But when there's both land and sea to contend with, and a 20-foot long demon lizard with razor-sharp teeth that can pop out of a river and chase you back to your house, now that's what I call real. Fear. Fossilized remains of the Tanistrophius have been found in a multitude of places across the planet, from Central and Southern Europe to Central Asia, the Middle East, and China. Let's picture a modern world where these crazy long necked creatures are roaming around freely. You're on vacation in Southern Italy, canoeing down a river in Florence, when instead of angry birds to contend with, you've got a giant Tanistrophius swooping past your paddle. Or maybe you're out exploring in the rolling countryside of China, and instead of packing your mosquito repellent, you've got to cover yourself with anti Tanistrophius spray. Now, don't get me wrong, most modern paleontologists agree that the Tanistrophius was, for the most part, a pretty chill guy. Recent studies have concluded that the creature's diet revolved mainly around that of a piscivore. Basically, unless they were on the brink of starvation, the Tanistrophius was generally happy with chowing down on fish, squid, and, you know, probably some nice beer battered calamari. Because of their strange set of teeth in their rear jaws, the Tanistrophius have often been compared to several species of modern seal, particularly the hooded seal and the crab eater seal. So it wouldn't be absurd to imagine a flock of these weird little guys swimming around the coast and surprising a boat full of tourists out on vacation. They'd all whip out their phones, take a few shots for their Insta, and hashtag Tanny Selfie would probably be a little bit more common than hashtag Tanner Khan. Yikes. Research has also compared the Tanistrophius hunting regime to that of a common heron. You know those guys, big long necks, wading around in the water, pecking away at a little fish. When you compare the two, you can also see some pretty incredible similarities. You know, minus the wings and several hundred million years of evolution. Now, there are a whole group of people and a surprising amount of YouTube videos who are obsessed with watching the way that a heron hunts. They hunt frogs, rats, any kind of tiny little creature you can imagine, there's probably a YouTube video of a heron hunting it. Seriously, check it out. I was surprised myself. Imagine that with the Tanistrophius. There'd be amateur ornithologists staking out in huge, tall trees just to avoid its three meter long neck. I mean, how can you even camouflage yourself against that? The Tanistrophius is a pretty huge dude. They're going to be fairly hard pressed to sneak up on, all for the sake of a 43 second video clip. But I mean, would they even be eating fish and frogs? At 20 feet tall, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Tanistrophius wouldn't exactly be prey. I mean, which predator is out there taking a pop at the Tanistrophius? Versus a mountain lion? My money's on Tanny. Versus a bear? Yeah, still Tanny. And who's to say that they wouldn't have already had a taste for human meat? And now suddenly, we're on the menu. Whatever the answer, a world where the Tanistrophius didn't go extinct would be a pretty magical place to exist. Anything with a three meter long neck is a majestic sight to behold. You know, just as the sun's going down, a herd of them are frolicking through a valley, just like in Jurassic Park. That's it. They'd be just like giraffes that could swim and were also absolutely terrifying. That's all we've got time for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay updated. This has been life's biggest questions. I've been your host, Jack Finch. And for now, take it easy. <laughs>